But look at chapter 38, and I only have uh, three minutes, and I could go for three hours on this, because this is what's in the newspapers today, okay? And I'm going to talk fast. Ezekiel 38 describes that Russia would be the leader of an anti-Israel coalition. There was no Russia when Ezekiel wrote that. And so what does he say? He says, Son of man, verse 2, set your face against Gog and the land of Magog. Okay, look up Magog. Look it up in any dictionary or encyclopedia you want, and you find that Magog is a place where the ancient Scythians lived. That's not the Sith Lord of, you know, Star Wars. We're talking about real things here. This is the Scythians, the people that live north of the Black Sea. In fact, today, uh, Royce and um, Bob Nichols and Terry and I, recently we were on Red Square about a year and a half ago. There's a museum in Moscow on Red Square. It's called the National Museum of Russia. Do you know what the whole museum is filled with? Scythian artifacts. Russia is proud, and they, we're talking about the communist, former communist, godless Russian history people. The whole museum, huge, it's like the Smithsonian, is all of the Scythian, S-C-Y-T-H-I-A-N, artifacts that they hearken as their forebears, their ancestors. The, the Russians are the Magogites, who are the Scythians. So there, there they are. So Gog is their leader. He's in the land of Magog. Uh, he will be the prince of Rosh, and that's most scholars believe that's a, a word for Russia. Uh, Meshach and Tubal. The Meshach is, is, again, speaking of the, the region that's probably Turkey, you know, that goes up toward the, the Black Sea area. Uh, Tubal, if you know anything about Russia, they're now the number one exporter of oil in the world. They've surpassed uh, Saudi Arabia. Do you know where they found all their oil? on the Tubal River in the region of Tubalsk. Now, if you look at your Bible, that is, I mean, that is so clearly, no matter how you cut it, if you look at dictionaries, it's talking about Russia. So that's interesting, but look what it says in verse 9. It says, you will ascend uh, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Well, who are the peoples with you? Back up to verse 5. And this is where it starts making your hair stand up, if you have hair. That's just a euphemism for me. But for those of you that have hair, look at verse 5. This army coming in verse 9 that's going to come like a, a, a storm on the land of Israel. Verse 5, leading the charge with Russia is, what's the first name there? Persia. Persia was what Iran was called till 1935. They changed their name in 1935. Within the lifetime of the people that sit in the back of the church, okay? None of you. But within the lifetime of Bob Weir's Oasis flock, Iran is, is Persia. Now, never in history of this world has Russia allied with Iran. Iran was always whose partner? America's. You ever heard of the Shah of Iran and all that American thing? If you look at, at God's sovereignty... God is doing something that is unbelievable. We need to trust the God who declared that Russia, Iran, and a lot of other nations would come like a storm on Israel. And that lineup has never happened in history. But when you read the newspapers, and I'll just, this is what I was clipping last night. Since I clipped it, I have to read it. When Ezekiel lists Persia in the name, which is Iran, up till 1935, he is recording the word of God who knows exactly what will happen in the future. But everyone must scratch their head because Persia and Russia, there was no Russia while there was a Persian Empire. Never have they worked together. But in September of last year, the president of Iran stood on the podium addressing the United Nations. As he stood there, the New York papers record that the reporters interviewing him said that while he stood at the podium, a light surrounded him. And he said it was a light from heaven. And he said he had a vision. And he said, he is destined to bring about the return of the Islamic Messiah. And what he said is that he believes he is the 12th Iman, or the Mahdi. He believes he is the Messiah that's going to bring about the end of the world. And he believes that comes. Now, this is what he said he wants to do. He says, I want to 
annihilate completely the Zionist regime. They are a rotten, dried tree that will be eliminated by one storm. And those are his exact words to the New York Times. Look at Ezekiel 38, verse 9. It says, you will ascend this group, Russia and Iran, and you will come like a what? A storm. Now, do you think Ahimad, or whatever his name is, Ahimad, whatever the president of Iran's name is, do you think he sat around reading the Bible and saying, hmm, it says I'm supposed to come like a storm? Okay, I'll say that. I'm going to come like a storm. Did you know that Russia is right now has a thousand atomic scientists working in Iran? They have given them the most advanced missiles in the world. That the Russian scientists are teaching them how to make atomic weapons. Why would Russia do that? Why would Russia break just decades of, of reaching out to the West? I mean, we've helped them, you know, and rebuilt and given them billions and wheat and everything else. Why would they do this? Do you think that, that they are reading the Bible? No. There's this irresistible. In fact, God says, look at verse 4 of Ezekiel 38. This is how sovereignty of God works. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out. That does not sound like it's uh, uh, peaceful. It's, it's God is compelling them to do this. And God is drawing this, this inexorable titanic conflict between the east and the west and it's going to build and build and build until we already know the end of the story that russia is going to march with iran in a military attack on israel and you know what's going to happen to them it says verse 11 you're going to go up against a land of unwalled villages a peaceful people and verse 12 says to take plunder and when this happens it says that the Lord is going to destroy them in verse 18. It will come to pass at that time when Gog, that's the leader of Russia, comes against the land of Israel. And when Ezekiel wrote this, there was no land of Israel. Remember? There hasn't been a land of Israel for 2,000 years till 1948. So this was all in the future. But when they come, the Lord says, uh, My fury will show in my face, verse 19, I will be jealous, the fire of my wrath I have spoken. There shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea and the birds of the heaven... Did you know in Hawaii, there were people in the resorts in Hawaii, you know, they just had about 10 earthquakes over the weekend. Do you know what the resort goers said? When the earthquake, before it hit, a person was in one of those places you go on honeymoons, you know, and they were standing on the beach, you know, this couple, you know, like this. And he said, all of a sudden, in the cove of the Pacific Ocean, they said fish were coming totally out of the water, gigantic, just jumping like this, just totally like salmon do. Only it wasn't salmon. It was just every kind, every shape, every size. They were just jumping out of the water. And they said about 30 seconds later, the, the quake. See, they sense the earthquakes coming. Animals do. They have far greater senses. But look what it says here. The fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things, all them that are on the face earth shall shake at my presence. Because, see, they're so aware of the, they're tuned in to the seismic activities. Well, all that to say this, God says, trust me. Case in point, I said 2,500 years ago, Israel will go back in their land. They came back. They, they rebuilt the old cities, just like God said. They made the desert bloom like a rose, and they would have an exceedingly mighty army. There is no coincidence. Every one of those things, right down the line, happened. Started in 1900, continued in 1948, really hit a climax in 1967. And God says, after that happens, chapter 38, what will happen next is you will find Russia allying themselves with Iran, and those are going to build a confederation. And if you look at all the other nations, they're lining up as we speak this uh, uh, uh the other nations, Ethiopia, Libya, uh, Gomer, Tagarma. If you just look in a Bible dictionary, figure out where those are in a map, it's happening before our eyes. It's never happened in history. Why do I say all that? Because God says, I wrote the future so that you can trust me. I want you to trust me. And, and just for a little uh, homework for you all to think about, it says in Luke 21, 36, the Lord played this tape in Luke. He told the same thing in Luke. He said, all this is going to happen. Jerusalem's going to be surrounded. They're going to come and try and blow them up, and then I'm going to intervene. What was his application? 
Because I always think about this. Does that mean we should go get our prophecy books out and start a chart and start putting articles up every time something occurs? No, no. The purpose of prophecy is to know you can trust God. And if you trust God, it says in Luke 21, 36, he says, watch and pray always. The result of prophecy should cause us to watch for Christ coming, trusting he's the God who rules the nation. And number two, we should pray. Now, there are seven New Testament words for prayer. Do you know what this one is? The word beg. It's, it's to beseech, to employ. Every time people come on their knees and say, oh, Jesus, please, please heal me. That's the word, de oh my. It means I beg you. What does God want us to do? He wants us to watch and pray. He says, I collect all of your prayers. Pray. It says in Revelation 5, 8, I have a bowl that I keep all of your prayers in. I want you to pray. I want you to, to ask me to do great things. Prophecy shouldn't scare us. It should make us trust. It should make our peace like a river. It should make our righteousness like the waves of the sea. And if our peace is full and our righteousness is like the waves of the sea, we are unleashed to say, God, thy will be done. Just like it is in heaven, perfectly done. I want it perfectly done on earth in my life. And I want to pray. I want to ask and seek for you to do great and mighty things. And I think about this. If you read the rest of Ezekiel 38, the whole purpose God sets this coalition up is so that the whole Middle East will know that he's God. I believe one of the greatest revivals is going to come around when Allah is proven to be Nona, you know. <laughs> And when all of a sudden they think that they're going to win, and Amajin says, in two years, this is all going to be over. He told the U.N., he said, the Messiah is going to be here in two years. He declared that to the U.N. and said, and I'm the one that's bringing him forward. Did you know when he gets wiped out and Israel escapes destruction, there are going to be a billion people that are going to have the rug pulled out from under him. Right now, there are so many people being saved in the Middle East. It's unbelievable. God is beginning, and we should be. What a perfect time for our missions conference to have a heart for the Middle East.